Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how you can host a MySQL server remotely. And that means we're actually going to run this on a Linux server and then be able to connect to it from any machine that we'd like, assuming that we set up the permissions and all of that correctly. So kind of the basic process here is going to be set up a Linux server to host this MySQL, get our users kind of configured in MySQL, and then use some kind of code here, which is going to be this Python code, which we've worked with before and try to connect to that server and make sure that everything's working. So let's go ahead and get started and set up our server. So the first thing we need is a Linux server. Now, fortunately for us, Linode has actually sponsored this video, which means they're going to be giving you guys $20 off, which essentially allows you to have a server for free for four months. Now to gain access to this free $20, um, and use these servers, you can click the link in the description. It's the node.com slash tech with Tim or you can use the code TWT19. Now, if you guys aren't interested in actually hosting the MySQL server and you want to use this for something else, uh, Linode essentially allows you to kind of host anything. Like if it can run on Linux, you can host this on Linode. It's like a website, um, I don't know, an app, whatever it is, a MySQL server, Minecraft server, anything that runs on Linux, you can run on Linode so you can use that. And fortunately for us, Linode actually has 10 data centers, which means you can pretty much get low latency wherever you are in the world. And another cool fact about this is that they're actually opening a new data center in Sydney, Australia by the end of the year. So that's exciting for any of you uh, Aussies out there that might be following because I know they usually don't have much hosting in Australia. So anyways, that's enough about Linode. What we're going to do now is start actually setting up our server. So again, if you guys have a Linux server, you don't need to do this process, but I'm just going to walk you through because I assume some of you will follow along with me on this. I'm going to choose my distribution. I've just done this by clicking create Linode. Um, that's how we set one up after I clicked on deploy my Linux server. Then we're going to go Ubuntu 19.0.4. You can choose whatever version of Ubuntu you want or whatever image, as long as you know how to work with it. But Ubuntu is going to be the one I'm using for now. For regions, I'm going to select my region as Toronto, Ontario. And for my plan, I'm going to go to Nanode 1 gigabyte, which is $5 a month, which essentially means you can run this for free for four months if you've taken advantage of that free $20. Now for my label here, this is the name of the server. I'm just going to call this MySQL server very creatively. And then for my password, make sure you guys remember what this password is, because this is what you're going to use to actually log into your MySQL server. So I've made mine here. Um, again, make sure you remember it. Okay, so once we've done this, that's all we need to do. We'll click on create, give it a minute or two to boot up. And then once it's booted up, I will be back and we'll be working with the server. Okay, so I've booted up my server now. Everything seems to be working. You can see that it says running here at the top right hand corner. So that's so we know that everything's good. Now for this tutorial, what we're actually going to be doing is downloading a program called putty, which is going to allow us to SSH into our server in kind of a really easy way. And that just means we'll actually be able to modify some things and work with it from this computer. Now Linode has a solution for this built into the website. If you click on launch console, you'll get a little SSH window that's here. Uh, it's pretty minimal. But if you just want to go in and do some basic things, you can use that but since we're going to be working with a lot of commands and copying and pasting stuff we're going to be dealing with putty so what we need to do is download putty i'll leave a link in the description uh, it's free it doesn't take up much space it's like a few megabytes and then once you have it downloaded we're going to open it up and run it now here is where we're actually going to connect to our server now I'm going to make this a bit bigger so you guys can see it. Well, the first thing that we need to find is the IP address of our server. So if you're on the node, the way you can find that is by going to IPv4 tab here. I'll zoom in a bit so you guys can see it or looking at the after the at sign of your SSH access. That's going to be your IP address for the server. Other than that, I'm assuming if you have your own Linux server, you know the IP address. So we're just going to paste it in this host name or IP address uh, attribute of Pi here. And then what I'm going to do is change the font size of my window so that I can actually see it when we're uh, doing this because it starts off very small. So I'll just click on appearance. I'll click on change and then I'll go to 20 like that so you guys can see it. OK, so once we have that, we'll make sure this is typed in correctly. Port 22 is fine and we will click open. Now, the first time you run this, you'll probably see a window that says warning. Just click yes. That's fine. Don't worry about it. And we're going to log into our server as the root user. Now we're going to type root as the login and then the password is going to be whatever that root password is that we created and you won't see it when you're typing it. So just type it, then hit enter. Okay, so now we're in, we're on our server and we can actually start installing the MySQL server. So the first thing that we're going to do is just install MySQL. So to do that, we're going to type sudo apt hyphen get install MySQL hyphen server like that going to run that, give it a second. It's going to ask us to type yes. We'll hit yes and wait for this to be done and then I'll be back. 
Okay, so now we've actually successfully installed MySQL on this server. And what we need to do now is kind of configure it, set up a few things and allow remote access because by default, MySQL is localhost, which means you can only connect to it locally from the server. And that's fine in most cases, because sometimes you'll actually run like a MySQL server on the same machine as a website. And in that case, you only need localhost access because you're on the same machine. So you can modify the database directly from the website. But in our case, we need it remote. So what we're going to do now is type um, and actually open up the what is it called like the command? Uh, I gotta look at my other screen to remember this. It's like a command utility window for MySQL, which will allow us to modify some security issues. So we're going to say MySQL underscore secure underscore installation. And then we're going to say utility if I spelled that correctly. Okay, so now we have that. So sudo MySQL underscore secure underscore installation space utility. Now it's going to ask us a few things here. It's going to say validate password plugin can be used to test passwords and improve security. Uh, we want this to be secure. So we're going to type Y for yes and validate our password. So we're going to enter what the minimum strength of a password could be for us to log in. So in this case, I'm going to choose two or actually I'm going to choose zero as low because I just want to do a basic password for this, but you guys could do strong. And that means every time you create a new user, it needs to have a strong password. Okay. So I'll type zero. Now it's going to ask us for a root password for our MySQL server. I'd recommend you just um, make sure that this is a strong password and that you recommend or you remember it because this is how you're actually going to be able to log into like the admin part of MySQL and modify everything and set permissions. So you don't want anyone accidentally getting in here. So I'm going to set my password here and I'm not going to tell you guys what it is. <laughs> And then it's going to say estimated strength of the password 100, whatever it is. And then you can just go ahead and click Y. Okay, so now it's going to say remove anonymous users. We can do that. That's fine. We'll click yes. We don't need those. And then it says normally root should only be allowed to connect from localhost. This ensures that someone cannot guess at the root password from the network. We'll go ahead and we'll, we will hit yes as well. This just means that there's no way that you can log into the MySQL server as the root user unless you're actually on the machine and that's fine. Then it's going to say remove test database and access to it. We will hit yes as well and remove that reload privilege um, tables now and we will hit yes once again and hit enter. So again, this process, you guys can change what goes on here, but that's kind of my recommended security settings. And now we're ready to get in and actually creating a user um, and changing a few things so that this can be seen by any machine. So what we need to do now is actually set up a basic firewall on this machine. So to do this, we're going to say sudo UFW enable, which is just setting up like a really basic firewall. Uh, command may be distributed. Yep, yeah, that's fine. We'll click yes. So now it says firewall is active and enabled on system startup. Now what we're going to do is say sudo UFW allow MySQL, which essentially means we're going to allow MySQL to kind of bypass this firewall uh, and, you know, see other connections. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to actually mess with kind of a complicated setting of MySQL, which is the server binding. Now to gain access to this file where this is, we need to CD into a certain directory. I'm actually going to copy it in here because I am not going to remember what this is. It's just from my other monitor. So what we're going to do is we're going to CD into etc MySQL MySQL conf.d and hit enter. So this is uh, the directory path. Now, if you want to go like level by level, you can like CD into etc then CD into MySQL, then CD into the next directory. But this is the command. You guys can pause the video and type that in. Okay, so now we're in this correct directory. So now what we're going to do is actually use nano to modify a specific file. Now the file we need is going to be mysqld.cnf. So we're going to say nano mysqld.cnf and nano is just a very basic text editor. So now we're in nano to navigate through nano, you're going to use the arrow keys. So I'm going to scroll down until I see something that says binding. So it says bind address here. So you can see that the default value is 127.0.0.1. Now what that means is this is actually only binded to localhost, which means that only localhost, which is the actual machine can access the server. We obviously don't want that. We want to be able to access that from outside of this. So what we're going to do is change this to 0.0.0. .0, .0, um, dot zero, which is going to mean that anything can access this server. So it's binding to essentially any IP address that the server has, which means we can access it from anywhere else. So now we're going to save this by hitting control S. So that saves and exit by hitting control X. Okay. So now that we've done that, 
what we need to do now is simply set up a user that we can actually use to access the database, set up a basic database, and then we'll be good to connect from our Python code. Okay, so I almost forgot a few important commands here. We want to make sure that MySQL is always running on the server, whether we turn it off um, or reboot it or whatever. So we're actually gonna add this as a service. Now the command to do this is sudo, and I have to look at my other screen, otherwise I'm gonna mess this up. System CTL start MySQL. So what this has done now is started the MySQL service. And now what we're gonna do is make sure that the service runs continuously. So to do that, this command is sudo system. So it's actually the same uh, at the beginning. And then it is enable. So enable my SQL. Okay, so there we go. And now we're good to go. So it says it's executed this, we've had this. So now we've set up MySQL, we start it, we've enabled it. And now what we're going to do is restart it to make sure that these settings are saved. So to do that one, we're going to do sudo. And I got to look at this again, system system ctl restart my sql okay uh oops did i do something wrong yep i need to spell system correctly so sudo sudo system ctl restart my sql okay so now we've restarted and now we're actually going to go into the my sql settings and start modifying some things so to do this we're going to type my sql hyphen u which stands for user we're going to type root which is the root user and then we're going to type hyphen p now it's going to ask you for your password this will be the password we set up when we went into that utility so make sure that you know what that one is uh, there we go so i've typed it in i'm now in the mysql console and this actually will now allow us to type mysql queries as well as to grant access to specific users so the first thing i'm actually going to do is create a database so i'm going to say create database test i'll just keep it lowercase like that and i'm going to end this with a semicolon so let's hit enter it says query okay one row affected and now we've created a test database and the reason i've done this is because we're going to give access to our user to this specific database on our mysql server so now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to type grant all on test dot star now what this is saying is i'm going to grant all permissions on the database test and test.star just means any tables inside the database. If you wanted to grant access to a specific table, like say we had a table called users, then we would do test.users and that would give this user specific access just to the user table from this database. But I want them to have access to all, so I will state star. And if you wanted to just grant access, say maybe you just want them to be able to select data, like just look at data in the database, you would say grant select. If you wanted, you know, grant select, and update or if you wanted like grant select um i'm trying to think of other queries you could do here i guess create uh delete you could do that and that will give that user specific access to those commands so i'm going to say grant all on test.star and then what i'm going to do is actually type kind of a complicated thing so i'm just going to look to make sure i don't mess this up i'm going to type two and in this case we're going to type the name of our user which is tim at and now this is where it gets kind of complicated. We need to actually get the IP address of the machine that's going to be accessing this. So right now we set up a Linux server, we have MySQL running, and now we're actually going to give access to a specific machine to access this server. So to find the IP address of your computer, you can literally just go into Google and type my IP address. Now I'm not going to do that because that would show you guys what my IP address is, but let's just do a like, you know, test example. So you guys see what I mean. So I'm going to do to Tim, and then you would type whatever that IP address is. So you search my IP address, you find your public IP address and you put it here. Let's just say it's like 172.168.1.4. It's probably not that, but let's say it is. Then we're going to say, um, what is it? Identified by we're going to put a string and inside this string, we're going to put the password that we want. Now, in this case, I'm just going to make a password like one, two, three, four, five, six, but you guys should make this a secure password because this is going to be how you access the database remotely from that specific machine. So quick recap, because this is the most important part. I'm sorry. I'm dragging this on grant all on database that you want, then whatever table or, you know, all of them with star to the username that you're going to log in with, which in this case is Tim at sign the ip address of whatever machine is going to be logging into this so the public ip address you can find that by looking on google identified by some password in quotation marks okay so once we have that we're going to hit enter 
uh, sorry, we're going to put a semicolon, then we're going to hit enter. Um, I'm getting an error because it's saying my password is not strong enough, but I will set that in and then move on. So now that we've done this, we're actually done everything that we need to do on the MySQL Linux server, and we can actually start messing with this from our Python code, and that's the part I'll get into now. Okay, so we finished everything on the Linux server. Hopefully for you guys, that query worked. Again, you're gonna use your public IP address and then put the password in, so identified by you know that string password. Okay, so I hope you haven't forgotten the server IP address because we still need that. So here I'm in some Python code. This should look familiar if you followed the previous tutorials. Otherwise, what you need to do is uh, install MySQL connector on this machine. Then you're gonna set up a database connection like this. And here, what we're going to do now is for our connection, rather than using the local host connection, which we had before, we're actually going to use the IP address of the server that's running MySQL. So that Linux server that we've created now, mine is here. So I will take this IP address, copy that again, put that as the host. I'm going to put that username as whatever the user was that we had before. So whatever one we created, so like Tim at right? And then our password is going to be whatever password it is. Now, this is the password I set strong password one, two, three, four star. Um, <laughs> I know makes sense. And now what we're going to do is just run this and see if we get any errors. So if you run this and there's no issues, there's no errors that pop up, you can create a database cursor, you've set up this connection, you're fine. And you're actually good to go and start working with this like it was any other database that we've had before. Now, when I say, you know, show databases, I can print out uh, my cursor dot fetch one if I could type properly. And then we will see we get information schema, which is some database that we have. So if we want to connect to that specific database we had before, what I can actually do here is say database. And then I believe I called created one called test, right? I think I did. So then I also say test. Um, and you know, when it says show databases, I want to say show tables. And then we see we have no tables to show here. So anyways, we are actually good to go now. Uh, we can run any queries we've connected to this MySQL server. So if you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. But again, a thank you to Linode. Take advantage of the free $20 credit. You guys can do whatever you want with these servers. And hopefully this helped you out in terms of how to connect. If there's any steps you want to be, you know, like you didn't understand or I made something confusing, please again, leave a comment. I'll try my best to respond. With that being said, I will see you guys in another YouTube video.